case of a 10 year old boy presenting with hairy patch in the lumbar sacral region uh, so we are provided with these images so as you can see that uh, the conus medullaris this is the conus medullaris it is terminating at the level of uh, the conus is terminating at the level of here the conus is terminating at the level of l3 vertebral body which is lower than normal and it is consistent with the tethered cord a thin tract a very thin tract which is uh, hypo intense uh, to fat and uh, uh, a thin tract which is hype intense to fat uh, extends through the subcutaneous tissues here uh, from the skin surface at L4 uh, to the dorsal spinal column at uh, L5 here okay so this is the thin tract we are talking about a uh, fiber fatty stalk a fiber fatty stalk uh, which is hypo on T2 uh, here this fiber fatty stalk, we are talking about this, which is it is hypo on uh, T2 and hyper on uh, uh, T1 weighted image. Okay, so this is the stalk and it is hyper on T1 weighted image, hyper intense on T1 and it is hypo on T2 and it extends from the conus medullaris to the dorsal spinal canal. At the level of L5 okay so here it is extending from the conus medullaris to the dorsal spinal canal here at the level of L5 so this is a, a case of dorsal dermal sinus and in the differentials you can include sacrococcygeal dimple next is case of a 71 year old woman uh, with recurrent uh, uh, thoracolumbar pain on her right side and uh, these are the images that are provided so as you can see that uh, there is a well circumscribed cystic and solid here this is the lesion well circumscribed cystic and solid intramedullary mass which is present in the lower thoracic spine and the solid nodule in this lesion is uh, enhancing homogeneously here this is the post contrast sequence and the solid nodule is enhancing okay so this this is the solid nodule which is homogeneously enhancing here all again on in the axial post contrast sequence we can see it is the solid nodule is enhancing so this is uh, a case of ependymoma and uh, in the differentials you can include uh, astrocytoma or uh, hemangioblastoma or metastasis. Next is a 55 year old man uh, presenting with the right sided sciatica and uh, these are the images. Now as you can see that uh, this is the sagittal axial T2 weighted MRI. Uh, this is the sagittal T2 weighted MRI, this is the axial T2 weighted MRI and there is a hypo intense ventral epidural mass which is uh, dorsal to the s1 vertebral body this is the s1 vertebral body and this lesion is dorsal to this s1 vertebral body and it is uh, in the um, axial sequence we can see that it is eccentric to the right side it is on the right side and it is uh, continuous with the uh, l5 and uh, here it is continuous with the l5 s1 intervertebral disc okay so it is continuous with this disc and this mass is uh, deforming the thecal sac it is deforming the thecal sac and it is uh, displacing the right sided here it is displacing the right sided sacral nerve roots okay so it is deforming the thecal sac displacing the nerve roots so right sided nerve roots so obviously in the this is a case of disc extrusion disc extrusion and in the differentials uh, you can include a sequestered disc, disc protrusion and nerve sheet tumor. Next is uh, a 26 year old patient presenting with low back pain and uh, these are the images provided. Now as you can see that uh, there is uh, here there is superior end plate compression deformity at L1 and there is a soft tissue mass surrounding the T12 
and L1 vertebral bodies here and the intervening disc space. This is that soft tissue mass. This mass is hyper intense on uh, T2. Okay, it is hyper intense on T2 and it is enhancing uniformly after contrast. So, after giving contrast, this lesion is enhancing uniformly and uh, the ventral epidural uh, component is actually displacing the thecal sac. Okay, so this is the ventral epidural component which is displacing the thecal sac. The posterior aspect of the intervertebral disc contains the enhancing material, uh, but its involvement is less extensive than that of the vertebral bodies. So this is the posterior aspect of the disc here. This is the posterior aspect of the disc, which is actually it contains the enhancing material, but its involvement is less extensive than that of the vertebral bodies. So this is a typical case of tuberculous spondylitis. And in the differentials, obviously, you can include pyogenic spondylitis or metastatic neoplasm or lymphoma or myeloma. Next is newborn uh, boy presenting with the intrauterine abnormalities which were noted on prenatal ultrasound. And these are the images. Now, as you can see, that this is the AP radiograph and it shows the absence of the coccyx with the fifth sacral element. Okay, so the fifth sacral element along with absence of the coccyx is shown here. On sagittal MRI, the distal this the distal spinal cord has a blunted appearance and it is terminating at the mid L2 level. Okay, it has a blunted appearance and it is terminating at the mid L2 level. Uh, however, the nerve roots of the corda equina are appearing normal. Okay, the nerve roots of the corda equina are appearing normal. So, this is a case of caudal regression, caudal regression, and uh, in, in the differentials, you can include tethered spinal cord. Next is 12 year old boy presenting with the back pain and uh, these are the images. Now as you can see that uh, there is a mass within the spinal canal at the level of L2 uh, ventrally, ventrally displaces the nerve roots of the corda equina. Okay, So this mass is ventrally and it is displacing the nerve roots of the corda equina. And uh, this mass is uh, a hypo intense to CSF. This is the CSF, this is the ADC mapping of the CSF, and this is a hypo intense to CSF on ADC map. Okay, so actually, this is spinal epidermoid tumor because this is hypo intense, so it is giving basically it's showing diffusion restriction. So, this is spinal epidermoid tumor, and in the differentials, you can include dermoid tumor and arachnoid cyst. Next is 83 year old woman presenting with a four months history of worsening back pain which is not relieved by epidural steroid injections. So as you can see these are the images and as you can see that there is a large ovoid mass which fills and slightly expands the spinal canal just below the conus medullaris. Okay, Just below the conus medullaris this mass is filling the entire spinal canal and uh, expanding it as well, slightly expanding it. So this mass is largely, it is hyper intense on T2. Okay, this is hyper intense on T2. And there's a rim of T2 hyper intensity about its margin. Okay, there's a rim of T2 hyper intensity around its margin. And this mass enhances diffusely. This is the post contrast sequence and you can see that this is enhancing diffusely. There is diffuse enhancement of this mass. So this is a case of myxopapillary ependymoma. Myxopapillary ependymoma. And in the differentials, you can include paraganglioma, nerve sheet tumor, meningioma and metastasis. Next is 44 year old man with numbness and pain in the left foot and leg for one year. These are the images provided. Now, as you can see that uh, this is the sagittal T2 weighted MRI 
and this is the sagittal reconstruction from CT myelogram. Now here you can see that there is a focal anterior displacement of the spinal cord here and the dorsal subraconoid space is expanded. It's quite clear here. There is focal anterior displacement of the spinal cord. The dorsal subraconoid space is expanded. These are the axial images. This is the T2 weighted MRI and uh, the ventrally placed spinal cord is actually eccentric to the right it is eccentric to the right and it contacts the dura. However, the cord signal is normal. On CT myelogram, there is no contrast anterior to the cord. Anterior to the cord, you are not seeing any contrast. So, this is a case of anterior cord herniation. And uh, in the differential, you can put dorsal arachnoid cyst. Now, next is 63-year-old woman uh, presenting with ataxia. And uh, these are the images provided. Now, you can see that this is the sagittal T2 weighted MRI, and there is hyper intense signal on hyper intense signal which is limited to the posterior columns and is extending from C2 to C7. Okay, from C2 to C7. This is the hyper intense signal limited to the posterior column extending from C2 to C7 here. There is no mass effect. Okay, There is no mass effect also. This is the or enhancement. Okay, this is the in post contrast sequence. So there is no enhancement within this lesion. And uh, on the axial T2 weighted MRI, this uh, ha uh, signal has an inverted V this here inverted v configuration axial t2 weighted image this signal has an inverted v configuration so this is the typical case of subacute combined degeneration and uh, in the differentials you can include hiv myelitis multiple sclerosis cord ischemia and uh, infectious myelitis this is the case of a 10 year old boy presenting with lower neck pain and uh, these are the images provided. Now, as you can see, that uh, in the T2 weighted MRI, tripinal T2 weighted MRI, there is a cystic structure at the cervical thoracic junction, and it is located in the prevertebral space. This lesion is extending into the spinal canal uh, here, it is extending into the spinal canal through an uh, osseous defect in the spine. So there is a defect in the spine and this lesion is extending into the spinal canal. Okay, so here you can see this is the defect. This is that defect, osseous defect in the spinal canal. And uh, there is marked focal scoliosis here. You can see this is the scoliosis. So there is marked focal scoliosis and uh, anomalous vertebral body formation at the cervical thoracic junction here. So this is a case of uh, neuroenteric cyst and in the differentials you can include arachnoid cyst and meningocele. 52 year old man with slowly progressive lower extremity weakness and paresthesias. So these are the images provided here. So, as you can see that uh, in the T2 weighted MRI, there is extensive hyper intense intramedullary signal abnormality over a long segment of the thoracic spinal cord. And uh, these there are enlarged and serpiginous flow voids, basically. Okay, these are flow voids, enlarged and serpiginous flow voids enlarged serpiginous flow voids then they are present along the dorsal surface of the along the dorsal surface of the spinal cord the contrast enhanced mra here this is the contrast enhanced mra it confirms the presence of dilated pile veins and uh, the this is the contrast in the contrast enhanced mra and then arterial phase catheter angiography here 
the arterial phase catheter in geography shows the dural arterial venous fistula with shunting into the pile venous system. So, in the differentials, this is the case of spinal dural arteriovenous fistula. This is typical imaging picture of spinal arterio, uh, dural arteriovenous fistula. But, however, in the differentials, you can include spinal cord astrocytoma, demyelination, spinal cord infarction, and transverse myelitis, and sorry, infectious myelitis. Next case, 13 year old girl uh, presenting with headaches, and uh, these are the imaging findings. Now, this is T1 weighted MRI sagittal, T2 weighted MRI sagittal sequence. Now, you can see that uh, this is the expensile intramedullary lesion of the lower cervical and upper thoracic spinal cord uh, with signal characteristics which are very similar to those of CSF. As you can see that on T1 image, it is hypo just like CSF. On T2 image, it is hyper, just like CSF. And uh, also on the post-contrast sequence, we can see that there is no uh, abnormal. This is the, you can see that there is no abnormal enhancement in the post-contrast sequence. And here, the cerebellar tonsils are protruding through the foramen magnum, and uh, they have a pointed configuration which is consistent with KRE1 malformation. So, this is a case of syringohydromyelia. This is syringohydromyelia and uh, it is very commonly associated finding with KRE1 malformation. So, this is syringohydromyelia and in the differentials, you can include cystic intramedullary spinal cord neoplasm. Next is 8-year-old uh, with interning left foot and bladder dysfunction. So, these are the images that are provided here. Now, as you can see that on the sagittal T1 weighted MRI, and this is the sagittal T2 weighted MRI, there is a lobulated mass in the dorsal spinal canal with signal which is matching that of fat. Now, this is the fat signal. This is fat signal. This is fat. This is fat. So, this mass is showing the signals which are very much consistent with fat. And uh, the corta equina here has no clear termination, okay? And it is gradually thinning as it passes inferiorly. It is gradually thinning as it passes inferiorly and forming a neural placard. These are the axial images and uh, this is the T1 weighted image and it shows a, a large, there is a large dysraphic defect. This is the dysraphic defect, large dysraphic defect through which the this lipoma is continuing with the subcutaneous fat. This is the subcutaneous fat, this is the lipoma, this is the defect and this lipoma is continuing with this dysraphic defect through this, uh, this uh, uh, through this dysraphic defect is continuing with the subcutaneous fat. So, this is a case of lipomyloceal and uh, in the differentials, of course, intradural lipoma can be included. Next is 81-year-old woman uh, who fell down three steps and uh, these are the images. Now, as you can see uh, that there are actually uh, compression fractures uh, with height loss and wedge deformity here, wedge deformity and uh, marrow edema in uh, several thoracic and lumbar vertebrae, okay, here. So, several thoracic and lumbar vertebrae and uh, in the lower thoracic spine, uh, there is a dorsal here in the lower thoracic spine, uh, there is a, a dorsal epidural mass here, okay, which is uh, displacing the spinal cord anteriorly and uh, it is hyper intense on uh, here. You can see that it is hyper intense on T2 and it is hyper intense on T1 and uh, it shows no enhancement on contrast enhanced sequence, okay. There is no enhancement on contrast enhanced sequences here. There is no enhancement on contrast enhanced sequences. So, this is consistent with spinal epidural hematoma and uh, 
In the differentials, uh, you can include epidural abscess or epidural neoplasm. This is a case of 10 year old girl who presenting uh, with the neurogenic bladder and uh, these are the images provided. Now, as you can see uh, that uh, there is a complex uh, segmentation anomaly here. There is a complex segmentation anomaly in the lumbar spine uh, with fusion of L2, L3 and L4 vertebrae. Okay, these three vertebrae, they are appearing fused. So on the sagittal T2 weighted image, the spinal cord is also appearing dysmorphic. This is the spinal cord. It appears dysmorphic. It appears thin. It is relatively thin compared to the normal spinal cord. And uh, it has a gradually tapered configuration with the conus uh, tip at the L4 level. And it appears bowed anteriorly. Okay, it is bowing anteriorly and it merges uh, with the dorsal dura. The Here, this is the coronal sequence and this is the axial sequence. And you can see that there are two equally sized hemichords here. Two equal sized hemichords. Okay, two equal sized hemichords. And there is an intrasacral meningocele as well here. This is the meningocele, intrasacral meningocele. So this is a case of uh, diastematomyelia. And in the differentials, you can put arachnoiditis. Now next is 71.